Hey there, Carrie Rhodes here. Welcome back to my stamp studio and my YouTube channel for another card making video. Now, I know a lot of you have been missing my stamp set of the month series, which I normally do every Tuesday of the month. Well, I had a little burn incident. I burned my left hand pretty bad and it really slowed me down from doing a lot of things like that. You may have seen um, my finger bandaged in some previous videos. It's healing up pretty good and I'm about ready to hit it full steam ahead. But instead of doing my stamp set of the month series this month, I am doing this one video, which is one stamp set and I'm showing you three different cards with it. And that stamp set is Penguin Party from Lawn Fawn. I love penguins, so whenever I get a chance to play with some different penguins, I'm totally gonna take it. And I wanted to give you kind of a card making class style of video. I'm gonna have card measurements for you, paper measurements for you, so you could recreate these cards along with me using the stuff I use or even using stuff that you have on hand, adapting it to what you already own. These cards are good if you're kind of new to card making and they're gonna give you some inspiration and ideas even if you are an avid card maker. So we're gonna go ahead and jump in and get started with these three cards. Okay, here's a look at all the things I'll be using to create today's cards. This is the Penguin Party Stamp Set. It's a brand new from Lawn Fawn and so adorable. There is a coordinating die set. I'll be using that as well. I'm also using some standalone dies that are new to this release. This is the Magic Iris Snowflake add-on. I'm going to be using it without the Magic Iris today. And then I'll be using this Magic Holiday Greetings Stamp Set. And it's made to go with that Magic Magic Iris Snowflake, which I do have the Magic Iris, so I had to have it, but it's great to use on its own too. Next, I'll be using the Stitched Snowflake Backdrop. So yummy having stitched snowflakes on your background. The Giant Let It Snow Die, and then I got this Say What Holiday Critters stamp set for free in my order. I'm gonna be using the Talk Bubble in that set as well. And there's one other thing I'm gonna use I forgot to pull out for this little intro, which is the Snowflake Background Stencil Set. It's a two piece stencil set. So I'll be using all of those. First, I'm gonna stamp out all the images in this stamp set. And because I'm making several cards, I decided to go ahead and stamp this out several times while I had the stamp set out. This is gonna save me time down the road when I'm creating my cards. So I stamped it four times and now it's time to do some Copic coloring. I'm gonna use some neutral gray markers on my cards today. I started with N4 as my lightest color. <laughs> and then I'm bringing in N8 as my darkest and blending that out with my mid-tone, which will be N6. And then I just come back in with my lightest and soften out that edge. For the penguin's nose or beak and feet or flippers, I am using <laughs> Y17 and Y15. Very small areas, so one or two markers will do fine. And then I used um, some N0 around the white part of the penguin to add a little shadowing, which I'm also doing to the igloo, which I'm super excited to have a little igloo stamp to go with these penguins. I'm going to color the door with BG11 and BG32. I'm going to use this color as a blue and a green throughout my cards today, just as kind of a non-traditional combination of red and green. And it just gives me that icy cool feeling. Plus it's like my favorite color. So I had to do it. And then I gave it a red chimney. So now you can see all the images colored um, with those same markers that I just showed you how I used. And you can see all of them there on the screen. So if you need to pause that and check them out so you can replicate them, you can do that. Then I just took my white jelly roll pen and added some white highlights to all the things. Next, it's time to take the coordinating dies and cut these out. Of course, you could always fussy cut them, or if you had an electronic cutter, you could do that too. I love having coordinating dies, so I die cut out all of mine. This is the penguin we're going to use on the first card, and it's fun because we get a stamp in that little sign. Okay, for card number one, here are all the measurements of the things that you'll need. Again, you can pause the screen at this time and go cut out all these things if you'd like to recreate this card. So I'm taking this 4 by 4 piece of cardstock to die cut out my Magic Iris Snowflake, and I'm using a square set of die cutting plates from Spellbinders. These are six by six. And the reason why they're square is so when you're die cutting intricate dies, you can run it through once, 
give it a quarter turn and run it through again. And you're cutting it from a different angle versus running it forward, running it back. And so that's gonna help get into those little areas that maybe just running it forward and back would not. And this definitely is one of those intricate kinds of dies. And I found that to be really helpful uh, the first time I tried to die cut this, it was a no-go. It did not come out of the paper. So using that die was really helpful, or those plates on the die. I stamped I'm snow glad we're friends onto my sign of my penguin, and um, now I'm working on adding or creating all the things that will now go with this card. So the background is always one of my favorite things to do. So I'm going to stencil this one with that snow backdrop and I'm using some salvaged patina ink on this. I'm going to use the same color on both of the stencils. The reason why there's two is because you could then change out the colors. You can really get creative when you have two. Plus you can make your background full or you can make it less full. <laughs> so it's your choice how you want to do this. Maybe you have a snow stencil already at home and you don't have to buy this one and you can use that. You could also use some background paper or some splattering, like just get creative on the background. It doesn't have to be this one if it's something you don't have. So here's my die cut snowflake. I'm laying it on my card and tracing that circle. Then I'm bringing in a circle die that's just slightly larger than that. And I'm gonna cut an opening into this because I'm going to be creating a shaker card for card number one because shakers are my favorites and then I am using some liquid glue I like to use the barely art glue and I'm adhering my window sheet my first window sheet you're gonna need two of those at about three inches by three inches and then I'm gluing down my snowflake right over that opening and then before I'm able to create my shaker, I wanted to make sure and stamp out my sentiment right on this card front panel. So I am stamping out, have a very cool Christmas because I'm stamping over something that's already inked. I chose to use my Versafine Onyx Black Ink. Um, pretty much any ink will do for you here. I just love the crisp, dark, black ink of that pad. So there we have our card front and now when that ink is dry, you wanna give it just a minute or heat set it, we're going to go all the way around that window opening with some foam tape. And we're just creating a reservoir now to trap in all of our shaker bits. We don't want them to escape. Also, I don't like my card to be flimsy. So I'm gonna put a little extra foam tape at the top and bottom. Now I have this giant massive amount of micro beads that I've had for an eternity. Yeah, I use some of those, but you can also use some seed beads, which I chose to use in there as well to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to remove the foam, the backing of the foam tape just around that window and put my second window sheet on. This is gonna trap all my little shaker elements so I can easily add my card front to my card base. Super cool trick adding that second window sheet that I learned from my friend Cassie. I will forever be in your debt, Cassie. It has changed my life. So helpful. So there you can see the shaker, those little beads rolling around. I did use some anti-static powder on my window sheets to help those beads not static cling to the window. It's really helpful. All right, next, it's time to add in the super cute little penguin to the window. I have to say, when my little sister, who I'm eight years older than, was a little toddler, she used to call penguins pigwigs, and I've been obsessed with it ever since. I thought it was the cutest thing ever. My sister might be getting this card for Christmas. Next, I am adding some Melanite Magic Rhinestones. These are black rhinestones with an iridescent finish on them. Let's just take a moment to take that in. That's so cool, right? So I'm putting them at the end of the snowflakes, and because they have that iridescent finish, it's not too much black and it has that really cool shine to it, which kind of picks up the bluish color in my paper. Mm, I love it. So I really wanted this snowflake to stand out a lot more than it did on my quite busy background. And so I used the Lawn Fawn glitter pen. It was really cool, but I walked away, and the next day I came back to this card and I was like, it's not enough. So I die cut a black snowflake and that was the magical thing to transform this card into the card that I love. And I decided why not add the glitter pen over the top of that as well. And to be honest, the glitter pen shows up so much better on the black. I could align the snowflake up a little better. 
But anyway, let's move on to card number two. All right, I have a piece of glitter cardstock I die cut that Let It Snow from. Pause it right here if you want the exact measurements of all the pieces, and you'll see how I cut them. And now I'm going to die cut out this scrap piece with the largest frame from the large Slimline with Sliders die set. It measures eight and a half by three and a half. And the reason why I'm using it is because you get that super cute stitched edge. Now you could just cut your paper to eight and a half by three and a half. You wouldn't have to have the stitched edging and you could do the same right here. Just cut this piece to be about one and a half inches by three and a half inches. Then I'm using a hillside. These are the simple stitched hillside borders and it's going to have the stitching across the top of the hill as well. That's super cute. Again, you could just cut that freehand or with another circle die that was big. Use whatever you have or if there's stuff that you're like, oh my word, why have I never had that in my life? You have my permission to buy it. <laughs> All right, so now I'm bringing back the salvage patina and I'm putting a little bit at the bottom of the card, just a little. Then I'm bringing in the black soot to make a night sky and I'm going to Add it on just as you see me doing here to the entire like three fourths of the rest of this panel. And I'm going to blend it in with that salvage patina. Then I'll bring back the salvage patina sponge dauber without adding ink to it and just blend those two together and soften it out. What I'm going for is a little bit of a glow above my hill. And now it's time to splatter all the things. Splatter is life. I did water spritzed from my distress sprayer first. Next, I'm bringing in my liquid stardust, which is mostly gone. So I just added a spray of water or I added a lot of water to it actually, thinned out the little bit of shimmer that was left in the bottom. And now I have this amazing sparkle shimmer splatter I can add to my card. It's so yummy. Next, I have some white acrylic paint, also added water to that. And I'm splattering that over the top. So layering splatter, it's my favorite thing. The water, the shimmer, the paint, it really adds like a depth to your card because those water splatters kind of end up looking like, like clouds in the night sky. And then you have the shimmer of that um, sparkle dust, liquid sparkle dust, and it just makes it look like glow, glowing snow. I love it. It's so cool. All right, so I backed my Let It Snow with a second die cut just to make it a little bit more sturdy. You can do that one time, two times, three times, or no times. <laughs> and then there's my little snowy hill that's also die cut from glitter paper, by the way. And then I'm adding in my stamped elements. All three of those were added with foam squares because, again, foam squares are life. They add dimension to your card, and that's like a little... Super easy thing you can do to make your card more special, add dimension. So here is that freebie stamp set. Thank you so much, Lawn Fawn. And I'm stamping out that word bubble, that talk bubble, and adding warm wishes. I cut that out with my scissors. I feel very proud of myself whenever I do that. And then I'm going to pop this up with a foam square right above my little penguin to finish out my scene. I'm going to glue this down to my card base, which is eight and three fourths by seven and a half. And I scored it at three and three fourths so I could have a white border around the edge of my die cut. I really like a white border on most of my cards. So I made that one a little bit bigger and it will still fit in a business sized envelope. Now these gems of yumminess that I'm adding to my card right now are wintry white. Both of these rhinestone mixes are from Trinity Stamps. They have some delicious rhinestones. I'm going to link them off for you below and make sure you check out the visual shopping list so you can really get a look at all the colors of rhinestones that Trinity has. Okay, next I am making another A2 size card using this stitched snowflake backdrop. I'm also going to die cut some hills just from white this time and these snowflakes, they're so cute with the stitching. I love that that cover plate. I, I know I'll use it a ton. All right, back with the salvaged patina. I'm going to add just a little glow in the sky right in the middle. I think I could have made it a little bit smaller than I did, um, but you know, it is what it is, as they say. And we're supposed to be fine with that. When you When somebody says that, it is what it is. You're supposed to be fine with it. Somehow it makes it easier to take. I don't know. 
I don't know how that works. All right, so now I am splattering again with the Liquid Stardust. That's the only splatter I'm using on this one, adding that magical shine and shimmer to it. Next, I'm going to emboss a sentiment from that Magic Holiday Messages and some Versafine Onyx Black Ink, and then I'm adding some black embossing powder, which is also quite yummy. I think I like black accents a lot. <laughs> They're, I don't know. They're really cool to me, and I think it adds something unexpected to these holiday or winter or Christmas cards, so I love it. All right, this set also has teeny tiny holly in it. The, that's one of the things that makes me happy. Like, if you add a teeny tiny holly or like a candy cane to a stamp set, it's like a little bonus surprise gift to me. I love it. I'm going to use it wherever I can think of. I don't know why that makes me happy, but it does. It, they're just so cute. So you can see I use those BG markers for my leaves instead of like traditional green. So my card would be super matchy matchy because I'm a matchy matchy kind of girl and I love it. You tell me what you think of the holly. Do you like it in those kind of cool colors? I do. All right, so I trimmed off the edge of my hills so it was flush with the edge of my card, and now I can start adding in all the things. For my little sign, I'm adding the words North Pole, also from the Penguin Party stamp set, and then I'm gonna add my little igloo house with the lights on it, my North Pole sign. Like, can you go wrong with a candy cane pole like that? How cute! There's so many other Lawn Fawn sets that you could use these stamps with, especially that little pole. So many. All right, so I have my penguin. He's coming out with a gift, and then the other penguins are coming out of their house with a little fish to trade. It's so cute. I ended up scooting my little igloo house over a little bit, and then I added that puff of smoke, and here comes my embossed sentiment. Oh, my word. And now next is the little holly right in the corner. I want to put holly in the corner of all my Christmas cards now. Is it so cute? What a lovely little touch. All right, this panel is actually full size A2, so it's gonna cover up my entire card base. Next, I'm gonna bring back those winter white embellishments. I added six right here, but then later, when I was about to take pictures of the cards, I was like, I need three more. So I'm gonna show you that in just a second where I added the three more, but there's the three cards. You know what would make me so very happy is if you made these cards with me. Bring out what you have and make cards together with me. If I'm a little too fast for you, you can pause the video. You can actually slow down the speed of the video in the settings, and then I will talk really funny, and you'll be giggling the whole time you make cards with me. <laughs> so there you can see I added three more of those gems to the top of this card, and I think they turned out super cute. And I love making these kinds of videos for you, giving you multiple ideas with one stamp set to show you you can make quick and easy slimline cards, quick and easy shaker cards, and build a cute little scene. Not everything has to be elaborate, which is a hard lesson for me because I kind of like things to be elaborate and have all the extras, but I loved making these cards and I hope that you enjoy them. If you do, let me know with a thumbs up and feel free to chat with me in the comments below because I love hearing from you guys. It totally makes my day and keeps me going. So thank you for your support. I will see you all again soon on the next video. Happy stamping. Bye.